Hi everyone, I am going to show you how to create your own line drawing and how to transfer it onto a piece of paper for you to create from a photograph. So one of the things I use, and you may like Photoshop or some other program more, but I like to use PicMonkey. So I'm going to go here to PicMonkey.com. And if you don't have an account, you can kind of play with this for free and um, take a screenshot or some other thing. But I'm going to make a, um, a uh, line drawing for these little fox cubs that I'm going to draw. So I go to this button that says Create New up here in the upper left. And I'm creating from a picture that's on my computer. And here it is. So I highlight it and click on open. I'm going to pause and let that catch up with us. So here's a beautiful picture of some fox cubs. And then I'm going to go to this magic wand over here on the left that says effects. The first thing I want to do is turn it black and white. Um, I was playing with it with the silver screen. I kind of like that. I used to use the super black and white, but it's a little much. It, it doesn't get all the details. I'm going to do a regular black and white on this one. Oops, I don't want to do that. I was saying regular black and white. And I can choose how much fade I have if I want a little bit of color there. Um. Same with the super black and white. Let's just try the regular black and white. I also like the silver screen. The silver screen one was kind of interesting. But let's do regular black and white and click apply. Then I'm going to keep scrolling down almost to the bottom. It says edge sketch. Now I can hardly see anything, but let's Thicken up the lines, bring in a little more detail, and bring in the fade, which will give me some of that black and white. Maybe I want an even thicker line. There we go. Okay. And then you can save it. If you have an account with them, you can download. It's going to ask you to pay otherwise. Otherwise, maybe you can click a screenshot or something of that and trim it. But that would be a nice edge sketch with a nice thick line that you can work with. I'm going to cancel and go back up to the silver screen or the super black and white. Let's do silver screen. Um, it's a little more, mm, it's a little more uh, dramatic. So now when I do the edge sketch, and thicken up the line and thicken up the level of detail. I really kind of get a better outline. So use whichever one works for you. There, I like that. The silver screen one worked very well. Now, then I saved this to my uh, computer. I'm gonna share my whole screen so you can see what I did. Um, I saved this to my computer. But I also printed it. Oops. Printed it. If I click print and printed it as a PDF. The reason for doing that, um, by the way, always unclick this fit to picture frame because then you'll be sure to get everything in the picture. Sometimes it wants to crop it off. By saving it, printing it as a PDF or saving it as a PDF, I will use less printer ink than trying to print that out as a photo. But either way, um, when you print it out, make sure that you're going to print if 
Give me a moment. Print in black and gray scale so you don't use up all your color ink on a um on just a a print okay i'm gonna stop that now i'm going to show you how to transfer that image because i printed it out and i'm going to show you how to transfer that and bear with me because i've changed my office around and i am working a little more like how i usually work with a drawing board leaning on my desk so i had to move my camera and all of that and and uh i'm i'm hoping that this works well now if i was working on a black paper or a dark paper i would use transfer paper the white transfer paper um i am using what i have found to be the best method just take your 6b pencil and cover the back with graphite no, that's going to waste some pencil, but it's just a 6B, 4B, your softest pencil you have, and fill in, and I go several directions, so I have as little white come peeking through as possible, so I'll get a very complete picture. Then I'm working on my cans and me tints. If you're working on that paper, make sure you're on the smooth side. It has plenty of tooth, but you're not fighting those bumps. And now I'm going to, believe me, this works better than the gray graphite. I'm going to center my my cubs where I want them to be. So a little bit in, I can lose a little of that. And make sure you tape it down because believe me, it will move. So I'm taping it down in a couple of places. And for right now, I'm leaving a way for myself to peek underneath. And then take a ballpoint pen and go to some corner, you know, maybe less important. I'm doing down here by the foot. Um, let's stay in the picture frame. And I'm making sure that the graphite is coming through. It's just pencil, so if you have a mistake, you can erase it. The reason I use a ballpoint pen is because once I find that right pressure, It'll kind of, you know, I can sort of roll it at that pressure. Sometimes we are using a pressure that, um, you know, if I go too light, it's not going through. If I go too hard, it's going to um, make dents in the paper and then my uh, color pencil will go very unevenly over those parts. So I'm going to do this. Uh, by the way, don't draw all the whiskers, mostly just where they start and stop from. Just like grass, you can indicate some of the main clumps but I don't think you have to go further than that. Get as much detail as you can see, and hopefully by doing this uh, dramatic black and white, you can see enough of the important details. The important details are where the color changes. So where the black and white contrast happens. You know, I want to know where some of this is. And you can keep checking, make sure it's coming through. Obviously, you can erase or redraw if you made a mistake, but this will keep your drawing as close to the photograph as you want. And you can place this. If I only wanted to do this guy and I wanted to move that guy, well, I could just move where I am drawing from, you know, draw this guy and then move the paper and put him somewhere else or put a different fox and create my own composition. I see whiskers there.
You can even draw all these sticks and the highlights and the shadow that's happening in them. I'm keeping you with me in case I think of something else while I'm drawing, because a lot of times I've got um, a plan of what to say. And then it's like, oh, yeah, I forgot. You know what you need to know? Now, some of these areas I'm putting in as lines because it's a rough. I don't need like a uh, hard line because it's where the fur is just fading out so I can indicate it like that. Remember, just where the whiskers start, we can figure out where they end later. Don't try to guess some of these things, like the nose. Um, did a little weird reverse thing. The dark part was very light, but I'm just drawing in those shapes. And if you feel like you got light for a second, Go back and check. Yep, doing good. Don't do that too often. It can move the paper, but I'm keeping it taped down. I'm keeping it taped down and just peeking. Now this looks darker here and then lighter up here. And if you're working on a heavily black and white picture and the black pen doesn't seem to work for you oh my goodness i almost forgot an eye wouldn't that be something it's happened before anyway if you have to use a um use a colored pen if the black and white you know if this black pen isn't going to show up now i don't have any problem here Just have to do the inside of this ear. I had a few more twigs up here, but I don't know how much of that I'm going to include or whether I'm going to change it. I like to take pictures and give the little foxes my own, my own um, composition and my own story. So I very often change where they seem to be in this photograph. These uh, little cubs are photographed by a wonderful photographer, Menno Schaefer, on um, Wildlife Reference Artists for, uh, for Artists, which is a great site to um, get your wildlife from, and you can buy the rights to use it. Okay, so now I have this light drawing, and because it's pencil, I can take my pencil and go in and deepen what I need, um, go back to the picture, which I have here, and uh, add details that I thought I could see fine on the picture, but maybe I want to enhance them a little bit, but also just make it a little darker. If your picture, if your graphic comes out too dark, you can roll a um, kneaded eraser over it to lighten it, but make sure you did not press hard enough that you have dents in your paper because your color pencil will not go over smoothly on that. But here's my pencil drawing all ready to go. Mine came out nice and, and light, so I could just color pencil right over it. I don't have to worry about removing dust. So that's one way that you can transfer your image from your own photographs or photographs that you purchase copyrights to and um, get jump right into your um, coloring without worrying too much about copying the, the photograph. So enjoy doing that. And I'll see you in art class. Happy coloring.